Hey everybody, wanted to do a fountain pen, uh, sorry, a hashtag pen rainbow. Uh, saw this on Ginger Peachy uh, Pen's channel, and I think this is fun. I, I, uh, I've got this zoomed out to a point where if I pick up an individual pen, I'm not sure how the focus will work. So uh, let's try this out. <laughs> um, I've got my top row are the... Uh, you know, quote, favorites of a given color, and then the bottom row as like runner-up or honorable mention. Um, some of the colors that Ginger Peachy had, uh, anyway, this, this will be different for different folks, just depending on what you've got. Uh, one interesting that comes out of this is you start to learn a little more about the colors you like, because you can tell uh, the colors you don't like as much or you don't have as many pens in that color. So uh, Let's work from right to left and I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to call it the pink category um, This is also maybe the multicolored category and it's the only pen I have that fits this bill. So uh, This is a Hongdian uh, It's the black forest, but this is the rainbow forest so um, it's got this really fun, uh, what's the right word for it? Iridescent, maybe? Um, even the nib has that same uh, color to it. Again, focus might be hard with this. A uh, couple things I don't love about this pen is the, the grip section is just a little bit slippery for me. And I think I've heard that the Black Forest... The main material is better, but for me, this is a, a slicker section. And then it's just a, a very fine uh, nib. And so I don't love it for that reason, but it's a beautiful pen. If I'm writing just a little bit, it's great. If I write more, then I'm constantly slipping. Um, it posts pretty well. It does make it a little long, but, but yeah, fun pen. So. That is the first category. Uh, moving on to red, uh, I noticed I don't really have red pens uh, generally. I have more of the burgundies. Um, I also have some wood, uh, a couple of wooden pens that have a little more reddish color to them. This is a rosewood, um, but I didn't feel like that really fit the category. So uh, the one pen that I do have that's shiny red is this... Uh, uh, Wordsworth and Black, I believe is the brand. Um, this is a metal pen. I got this uh, pretty low cost on Amazon. Just starting out with fountain pens and I, I hadn't watched a lot of reviews. And so it's a decent pen, uh, but it's not one of my favorites. It posts okay. Uh, also a very fine nib. So, yeah, I think it's, it's not a very well-known brand. Um, it's a heavier pen. I don't reach for it too often, but I do like the color. Uh, I've, I've noticed a little bit of difference in the color here in this end finial than the body. And I wonder if that's just, you know, the, 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 what you pay for kind of quality-wise. Uh, my kids call this like the Iron Man pen. So it is fun in as far as the colors go, but I haven't found the writing experience to be, you know, amazing. So we've got uh, pink, red. We're moving on to orange. Uh, I've got a runner up because I do like the, the Majon uh, Moonman A1 and it's a, it's a solid pen. It's great design, but it only comes in extra fine. And so that's kind of the downside there. Uh, the Jinhao 100 Centennial. This is uh, the Parker Dual Fold style. This is just an amazing pen. These are, they come in a lot of colorways. I just have the one and I call this the uh, Fire Opal is uh, uh, someone else online was calling theirs and I really like that, that colorway idea, uh, but I don't think they have a colorway. They don't, it doesn't post great. Makes it really long and doesn't 
I don't I don't feel like it posts well that way. Um, but it's a it's a great pen. I highly recommend the Jin Hao 100. It's definitely a, a great writing experience. So that's a fun orange color. Uh, moving on to yellow. Um, I don't have really a yellow. I mean, you can you can kind of call this a deep yellow. It's more of an orange though. So the best thing that fits is this is uh, Jin Hao 82. And it's modeled after the Sailor Pro Gears, inspired by those. And in fact, the colorway here is inspired by what I think is called the Gin Martini. Uh, so it's got this red end. It's got the uh, more of a yellow and a darker yellow, light green, and then the white. Um, so yeah, it's got the it's got the green on the ends. So I would call this a yellow. Um, but it's also got some white, so I could have used this in the white category. But since it's my only real pale yellow pen, uh, I'm going to count it here. Uh, these pens are great. I love these 82s. Um, I've got three of them. One of them is a runner-up in the brown category. Uh, and then I chose not to display it here, but... Sorry, bumping the camera. But I've got a blue one as well. And that would easily be a runner-up here. Um, but anyway, sidetracked. Uh, so yes, this uh, I would I would say this is a good my good yellow pen. Closest to yellow I have. So maybe I need to look at getting a yellow pen. I did hear uh, on the Goulet pen cast, yellows and whites don't sell a lot in general for fountain pens. And it kind of shows. Uh, I only have this one that would fit this yellow category. And I only have this uh, this other white one here, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, all right, for green, I've got a um, I've got this Dryden Designs pen, which I love the colorway. The nib does not come out of this unit, so there is that. So for that reason, I don't know that I can recommend the pen. Um, it posts okay. It doesn't feel great. Um, I would usually not post this pen. And this is with a, a medium tipped nib. I really think, uh, you know, this is, this is just a great writer. Uh, I think it was about $20 on Amazon. And I like a lot of things. It's a snap cap. It's, uh, although it's thinner, it's a very comfortable pen. It's that nice emerald green color, just beautiful. But yeah, for maintenance, the nib and the section don't, or sorry, nib and feed don't come out. I feel like that's kind of a deal breaker if you wanted to recommend it. Okay, well, let's move on to teal. I think the, the teal category, uh, this was a tough pick because I've, I've really been enjoying this Jin Hao uh, 9019. I just made a video review of this, which I highly recommend. This pen for about $11 shipping and everything. You got to wait a while to get it from China, but this is, this is just an amazing pen. So I, re I recommend that video. Um, but definitely the Twisby Diamond 580 in the, the Prussian blue. This is just a beautiful pen. It's got the facets here. Um, the nib is a fine, I wish it were a medium, but it's, it's wonderful. It's a great pen. So yes, it, that would take the cake on the turquoise or, or teal. Moving on to blue. Um, this is easily my best blue pen. This is a Moonman slash Majon M800. And it's, it's a, it's just great. It's uh, inspired by the Leonardo Memento Zero. Uh, it posts decent enough if you like to post your pens. Uh, the feel of the hand is great. It has this nice uh, milk bottle kind of section. Um, so anyway, beautiful. This is in the, there's four colorways. This is the galaxy blue, I, I believe. Lots of chatoyancy and depth. 
So easily picked my favorite blue. Uh, and then runner up would either be my blue 82 that I showed or um, I've really been enjoying this uh, Platinum Preppy and I have put Bay State Blue in here so I'm not afraid of it staining. Uh, these Preppies are great pens. Uh, I, if you like them juicier, definitely get the, the 05 or the medium nib. All right, let's move forward. Um, I don't have, you know, indigo, violet, magenta. I don't have those really. Um, but I, one of the categories that Ginger Peachy didn't have was the, like a burgundy. So between brown and blue, I'm, I'm putting burgundy and I've got, uh, both of these are great pens. The runner up is a Jin Hao 80. Uh, it looks a lot like a, a Lamy 2000, but you take the cap off and it's obviously doesn't look anything like it. It's a cartridge converter, uh, but it's got these Lamy style nibs. Great pens. These are, I just, I highly recommend these. They're very inexpensive. Uh, they're great workhorse pens. Uh, but yeah, I do I do like the experience of a, a bigger pen. Uh, so the the one that I'm selecting here is the burgundy version I have of the Jinhao X159. Uh, this is inspired by the Mont Blanc 149, and these are very inexpensive. Uh, but the the nib is a huge number eight size. Uh, it's got a nice wide grip section. Uh, it does post well. It's a beautiful pen and it, it writes well. Uh, I, I recommend the medium nib if you like to see more ink on the page, but yes, burgundy. So we go blue burgundy and then into brown. Uh, you know, again, we've got this, uh, could be a green or a brown. I chose to put it in the brown category as a runner-up, uh, the Jinhao 82, and it's a great pen. Uh, but this one I selected, this is uh, modeled after, sorry, this is a Wing Sung 699 vacuum filler pen. Um, and it is modeled after the Pilot Custom 823, though you can tell it's not, you know, it's not exact, it's of course inspired by it and it it is a great writer um, I have never used an 823 I'm sure it wouldn't compare at all um, I paid about thirty dollars for this pen and I have really enjoyed using it although I don't love vacuum fillers I I'm kind of learning that you know you try to clean them out and you can only get it so clean um, and you could try to disassemble it and I just uh, yeah vacuum fillers it's a fun filling mechanism I feel like everyone should probably have a vacuum filler just so they can experience that but it does have its downsides so let's jump to black uh, this uh, I've got a couple ideas here I mean we've got some black and silver with this Faber-Castell Ambition. And you have the black and gold with this Pilot Elite, also uh, E95S, same pen. But this is the runner-up. I do love this gold nib. It's got a nice bounce to it. I love the way it, it uh, you know, it caps and it posts and it's, it's just an elegant design. Um, as much as I like it though, I do like the Faber-Castell better. So this, uh, I bought this uh, at a store locally and it's nice to be able to try out pens as you're, as you're discovering fountain pens. So I do recommend brick and mortar stores for that. This uh, is a bit heavy cap, so it back weights it. And then the section is really weird. It's, you know, I like to grip mine further up so it Kind of forces you to be in an, in an uncomfortable spot. Um, but the nib is amazing. I just, I love it. I think the only thing I would change is, 
you know, the, the grip section and the, the nib, I would prefer a medium. I've learned that I love medium nibs more than a fine, but I got this very early on in my fountain pen discovery. And so I'm learning as I go, but this is a, this is a wonderful pen. So we got brown, we got black, moving on to silver. I only have one to choose from, and this is a Jin Hao, uh, I think, is it an X750? Yeah, it's an X750. And this, it's, it is just a nice pen. It's, uh, it posts okay. Um, it feels great in the hand. It's not slick. It's got a nice section here that's not, uh, not the same kind of metal. Um, it's a medium nib. I think they all come in mediums. I'm not, I can't remember. Uh, great pen. Snap cap. So yeah, not hard to choose when you only have one silver pen. Uh, for white, again, one choice. So this is a, the Jin Hao 80, uh, which I already mentioned down here. So this is a white version. Drawback of a white pen, especially if it has a white section, is if you're putting the nib in to fill it, you're going to get staining. And the staining is just difficult to get off. So with this pen, um, what I've been doing is syringe filling the, the, cart the converter. Uh, and then if, if you want immediate uh, ink flow, you just you know prime it so that you can get some ink going. So yes, I, I think it's nice to have a white pen. It's just not often do I reach for it. It's not something I, I crave to use, but not because of the pen design, but just the color. I think white is just an unusual color for me. All right, last but not least is clear slash demonstrator. And uh, the runner-up is Moonman Mahjong Q1. These are just such cute, amazingly chonky, uh, you know, short and stout pens. They're a lot more comfortable than you would guess. I mean, you post this and it posts okay. It posts decently. And it is nice and girthy. The grip, you've got a little more of a... Of a uh, Instead of being an open hand, it's a little more uh, claw-like that you're you're gripping down, but it is very comfortable. Uh, downside to this one is you can get some staining. You can see some of the purple in here. I used a, an imperial purple, and I just can't get that out. So it's a demonstrator. Uh, they do sell solid colors as well. And then the other downside is this is uh, an eyedropper pen, so uh, you can get the burping and the other issues when this uh, when the air uh, increases in there and it heats up in your hand or whatnot. So, you know, some pros and cons to it, but it is a wonderful pen to write with. Um, but it doesn't win out to my Lamy Vista Black. And this is an, an exclusive from Goulet. Uh, this is my only Lamy that I have, and it writes really well. It's got that unique triangular grip. It takes a little getting used to, but I I do I do like it. I do like the uh, and the nib is beautiful. It's black as well. It comes with a converter. Uh, I just have a cartridge in it right now that's empty. But those are my pens. So I would love to uh, see, you know, if you're inclined to make a blog post or a video, um, I'm going to follow this tag and just tag it, uh, hashtag pen rainbow, and we'll see what else other people have. Uh, please give this video a like. I would appreciate that and stay tuned for some more fun videos. Thanks.